tell you two things. I have a teen and sometimes he wants to talk about difficult things and sometimes he doesn't. And so we're gonna talk about how to navigate the conversation, but also what to do when they wanna talk and what to do when they don't wanna talk. So we're gonna get right into this and um, hopefully you will learn some helpful, helpful tips if you have a teen uh, that you need to talk to. So Tri-County was built on the belief that every person should have access to quality mental health care. Um, I do have over 20 years experience. Uh, I think it's 24 this year. Um, I have a master's of social work from Rutgers University. I also teach at Rutgers and I'm the mother of two kids, one of which is 12 and the other is 17. My husband's been an educated for, educator um, at the high school level for 28 years. So let's jump right into it. Difficult conversations with preteens and teenagers. What are the difficult conversations? Like what are the topics that are kind of hard to talk about, right? Sex, sexual orientation, masturbation, alcohol and drugs, academic difficulties, self-harm, secrets, and work and money. Um, these are really, and I, I think I would add to that relationships, like relationship difficulty and kind of friendship drama. The reason I add that to that, this list is, and of course I came up with this list, so I probably should have added it before tonight, but we'll add it, uh, we'll add it in the conversation. So these, the first couple ones on here are obviously difficult conversations, right? Sex is hard to talk about. Sexual orientation is hard to talk about. Like these are all just difficult conversations, right? It's not like these conversations that we walk around having with people every day, but certainly if you have a teenager, you're gonna have these conversations. These are the core conversations that they're trying to navigate into adulthood from teenagerhood into adulthood. So the issue of sex in terms of uh, safety, in terms of relationships, in terms of what's appropriate in relationships and what is not, right? Talking to, to your teen about um, the pressures of sex and the pressures of being a teen when maybe their friends around them are having sex and they're not, or vice versa. Your teen's having sex and you don't really know how to talk to them about it. Sexual orientation, masturbation. I do have a lot of parents that tell me that their kids are sometimes not coming out of their room for a long time. And, and when is it appropriate to engage in this and when is it not appropriate and how much? Um, alcohol and other drugs. I would say the same thing about sex, right? Your friends are using and you're not, or you're good getting invited to parties and you're not really comfortable with that yet. Also caveat, I did mention I'm in a barn. So you're going to hear some strange noises behind me because the horses are kind of right next to me. Um, Self-harm. Um, if you do notice that your, your teen is experiencing some anxiety, depression, and it's leading to self-harm and suicidal thinking or suicidal thoughts. Secrets. Um, all of these things, when you know that your teen is going through them, right? We're moms and dads. So what that means is we inherently know what our kids are going through something. Even if we don't know what the thing is, we know they're going through it, right? We know that something's changed is a behavioral change or a health change or a mental health change. So we know that our kids are going through something. We don't know how to bring it up, right? Or maybe we know that they've gotten in trouble recently and they're keeping it from us, or we know they're having sex and they're keeping it from us and they're not being forthcome. And that's why secrets is on there. And of course, work and money, right? When our kids get to a certain age, um, they do need to start kind of being productive members of society in a different way um, and talking to them about how they're spending their money, how they're making their money and what, what life looks like after they leave the nest. So these are just, this is like a, a snapshot of a list of um, topics that we may need to talk to our kids about that are difficult conversations. So how do we prepare for these conversations? There is no script for parenting. <laughs> I wish there was. In fact, I have a whole degree from Rutgers University to help me be a therapist and talk to parents about parenting. And there's still no script, right? But what I can tell you is there is no script, right? So just embrace that these are tricky conversations. Embrace that these are things that we need to talk to our kids about that might be really difficult. What I will say is think about these topics before they come up, okay? What I mean by that is 
if you know you've got to have a conversation about sex with your daughter, who's 15 or 16 or 17, you know, whatever that is, think about the conversation before it happens, right? Like, don't just sort of blurt it, you know, bust into their room and be like, we need to talk about this. Really be thoughtful about how you're going to approach the conversation and talk with other parents about how they've handled it, right? Other close parents, of course, you don't want to share your kids' secrets with other people. Um, but certainly, you know, be able to say to, um, be able to say to them, listen, I really thought about this and I really think that we should talk about um, sex and what it means. And, and you're getting to an age where, you know, you've been in this relationship for a while. And, you know, if you're having sex, we need to talk about it. We need to make sure you're protected. And if you're not having sex, we need to talk about what that might look like if you do, but have the conversation almost sort of like role play the conversation for yourself before you have it with your child. Okay. And, you know, if you have a therapist, talk to your therapist about how to talk to your kids about these difficult things. In your mind, work out a few key points before you enter into the conversation, right? Talk about if, if you're on the topic of sex, I want to talk about protection. I want to talk about what it looks like. Do you need my help in that area? Um, you know, what conversations have you had with your friends about this? What are your friends doing about this? Whatever those points are that you think you want to hit, you think you want to talk about, make sure that you sort of maybe even write them down and go over them in your head. What I always tell parents is don't find yourself blindsided, right? Don't go into the conversation just off the cuff and don't go into the conversation not knowing how you feel about different things. Make sure you know what your convictions are before you enter the conversation. However, that being said, sometimes these conversations come up organically driving in the car, right? which is why you wanna be prepared. It's not that you're prepared for the conversation because you know it's gonna happen. You're prepared for the conversation because you don't know when it's gonna happen, okay? And you can be in a situation where you take the reins and you approach the conversation yourself, but you can also be in a conversation where it just organically comes up. Um, I've had you know, my own child that has said to me, you know, telling me about another kid that he knows or another girl that he knows talking about something they might be going through. And just organically, we enter into a conversation about him going through that same thing. Practice the conversation. And here's the key. Initiate the conversation. They are going to organically come up and that's great. But if you were, if you initiate those conversations with your teen, it sort of opens the door for them to know that they can come to you with other things. So maybe you initiate a conversation about sex or maybe you initiate a conversation about their friends, right? You pose the conversation as, so anybody in your grade having sex yet that you know of? Yeah, that's like an uncomfortable thing to say. No, mom, I don't know. I don't wanna talk about it with you. Well, I just wanna let you know that you're at an age where your friends are gonna start you know, having sex. They're in relationships. And if you need to talk about it, we can, because the most important thing to me is that you're protected and that you know that I'm here to help you with that. So that's how that conversation sounds. It doesn't even maybe sound like you're going to have a full conversation. It just sounds like you open the door for when your teen is ready to have that conversation. So what happens once we're having the conversation? We're in it. It's been brought up. It's on the table. T talking to your 15 year old about sex, drugs, sexual orientation. It's there, you're in it. What do you do next? Stay calm. It's okay. These things come up. You're going to be in a conversation with your kid about some really hard stuff stuff that you may not have even had a really a conversation with your own parents about. This is important. It's important because we live in an age, which makes me sound like my mom, right? We live in an age where our kids have a lot of information before we give it to them. And they have that information from sources that we don't even know about, right? They have this information from friends, the internet, TikTok, they have it from school, just random conversations, right? We live in an age where if we don't initiate these conversations with our kids, they have already found out. 
In fact, my, my, one of my friend's son said, I learn more about sex on the bus than I ever will in school or from my parents. And he said it at the dinner table to his parents. I learn more on the bus than I ever will from school or you guys. And that really gave them a window into the influences that are in their kids' lives every day. So when these things come up, know that your kid probably knows and has researched this stuff before you are in this conversation. So that's why we go back to that slide before where we want to be prepared. Be honest if you're shocked. Oh my gosh, you want to talk about sex? Like right now, you want to talk about sex? Oh my God, I did not talk to my parents about sex. But dude, we totally need to talk about this, right? I'm so glad you came to me. Be honest. It's not that I can't talk about it. It's that I didn't think we'd be here right now. I think humor in parenting is really helpful. Even though you might be shocked, reassure your child, your teen, that they that you are there to discuss this. You are not backing away from this. You're not shying away from this. And do not ever utter the words, I do not want to talk about that with you, unless it's followed up with, but I know we have to, or I know we should, or I'm just kidding. What do you need to talk about? Okay. Make sure your child feels that they can talk to you about anything. And I promise you the number one way that difficult things come up with teens is by using their friends as an example. Most teens will say, my friend is going through something, mom, and I don't know what to do. Or I might say to my son, hey, you know, Jeff and, uh, and Jamie have been dating for a long time. Do you think they're having sex yet? And I bring up that conversation with like a third party, right? Because it doesn't directly affect him. It's not like I'm asking him, are you having sex yet? Right? And that leads us down a path of, do you think a lot of your friends are having sex right now? Like, do you know that? Um, you know, you've been, you've been dating Jess for a long time. Um, has that happened for you guys? And it's sort of an easy flow of the conversation when you bring it up as a third party. Make sure the first thing you say is something positive and welcoming. Unless you've got a great sense of humor and your kids know it, make sure it's positive and welcoming. I'm so glad you brought this up. Let's talk about it. I'm totally here for you. Before you respond with everything you know about these topics, because you do, you've got knowledge, right? You're the parent. Before you respond, ask yourself to listen, okay? Just listen. Listen to what they have to say. Listen to what they don't know. Listen to anything they have to tell you about their friends or the difficult time they're having that you don't really want to hear about, but you're going to have to because we signed up for this. Listen before you respond. How many times, I want you to think about this for a second. How many times have you wanted to talk to someone about something really important? And instead of listening, they responded. And when they responded, they didn't seek to understand. They responded with what they know. And if you can write this quote down, people don't care what you know until they care that you care. They know that you care. So people don't care what they know, what you know, until they know that you care. I know a lot. I'm a therapist, right? My kids assume I know a lot. They don't care what I know. They care that I care. They want to know that I care before I just start spewing stuff at them. So listen before you respond. Giving your child a chance to talk through what's going on. Don't try to fix it. They don't want you to fix it. They want you to help them figure out how to fix it for themselves. Because they can't leave you unless they know how to fix stuff for themselves. And if you always have the answers, how does that help them? They have to be stuck with you for the rest of their life if you know more than they do. Make sure you help them figure out these difficult things and how to handle it. And so that sounds like this. How do you want to handle this? I hear that you're having a difficult time. 
I totally know what it's like to go to a party and feel like you don't want to partake in the stuff that's going on. How do you want to handle it? Instead of, you know, you really shouldn't go to that party anymore. You shouldn't hang out with those people anymore. It's not good for you. That might all be true, but how do you want to handle it? That empowers your kid, your teen, to figure out their best course of action. And then when they get to execute that, they get to implement that course of action. What happens? Their confidence skyrockets because now they know they can handle difficult stuff. They went to you, they talked to you, you listened, and now they were able to fix it. If you come away from a conversation with your team, and it was hard, because those conversations are going to be hard. Talk to another adult. Talk to the other parent. Talk to your spouse. Talk to your partner. Talk to the school counselor. Say, listen, I had this conversation with Johnny last night, and it was really hard. Anything you can help, anything you can maybe help me navigate? Talk to other moms that you trust. Talk to other dads that you trust. Talk to other adults. Talk to your therapist. I have to say one of the best things I've ever seen parents do that have teens when it gets difficult is they put themselves in their own therapy because raising a teen is hard. Raising a teen is stressful and you've got to check your own stress at the door before you help them handle theirs. What to do next? Next steps. If it's not going well, which sometimes it's not gonna, right? Just because I'm giving you this advice today does not mean you're going to enter into the most picture-perfect conversation with your child. If you need some time to calm down, gather your thoughts before you talk, set time up, okay? Mom, I wanna talk to you about sex. Can we talk about it tomorrow? I need to get my brain around it. If you need to do that, it's okay, okay? Things like suicide, Things like self-harm, those can't wait, okay? Things that are medical, can't wait. Things that are mental health, can't wait. If your child comes to you and says, I, you know, that they have a sexual orientation issue and you, for whatever reason, doesn't matter why, need a minute to calm down, take the minute to calm down for you and for them. Gather your thoughts. And this is why we come back to that conversation we had earlier, which is make sure you're ready. Excuse me. Make sure you're ready for the conversation. You have a teen. There are 12 topics that are gonna come up in that teen's life. We went over those in the beginning. Be prepared. You probably won't need the minute to calm down if you're prepared. Offer to work with your child to find out what they need to know. What do they already know? I literally say, tell me what you know. Mom, I want to talk about sex. Tell me what you already know. Probably know more than I can tell you. Tell me what you already know. You're going to find sometimes they know stuff that's not correct. One day, sitting in my living room, I looked over my kid and I said, do they teach you how to put on a condom in, in high school? he was like, what? I said, did they teach you how to put on a condom in high school? And he thought about it. And he goes, no, they actually didn't. I said, so they teach you about condoms, but they don't teach you how to put it on? He said, no. So my husband is a health teacher. He was sitting in the living room. So I said to him, you, don't, you guys, you don't teach that? He said, well, some schools do, do some schools don't. I said, do you, did you teach him about this? So we're in the living room now, right? Now I initiated this conversation and it wasn't even a conversation, it was more like a question. And I was really surprised that my kid did not know how to do that, right? Like he's not in a relationship at the moment. So it wasn't like I had to say to him, are you having sex right now, right? But um, it was really more of a question of education. And so it led to, it led to a conversation about that whole thing which by the way, I was super glad I had because he wasn't taught about it. And I think both my husband and I assumed that that was being taught in his school and it wasn't. 
And then I sort of was like, you know, my gosh, how many other kids don't know how to do this, right? So those are those difficult conversations. Uh, just imagine not having that conversation. Like you, we all think as parents that our kids are getting what they're getting in, in sex ed in school. They may not be getting everything that we think they're getting. And that's the school's right, right? That has nothing, neither here nor there. But I simply asked the question because I wanted to know. And that led down a path of other conversations, of course. Try problem solving together. I really, really want you to glean from today to be open, non-judgmental, and to help them figure out the answer. Those three things are important with a teenager. Open, non-judgmental, and help them figure it out. The more you can help your teen figure out how to deal with really difficult things, and the more you can be open to the conversation, you're going to get a ton of information from them and you're going to help keep them safe. This is what we want, right? We all want as parents to help keep our kids safe. If that's our job to keep our kids safe, then we have to be open. We have to be non-judgmental and we have to help them figure it out because guess what is the issue with teens? We're not there. We're not there with them. We're not there when they're in the moment at a party and there's drugs being passed around and they have to make a decision, which is why I can't just tell them what to do because I'm not going to be there that day to tell them what to do. I need to help them figure out what they want to do, and then they can execute that. Help them to find solutions and make decisions for themselves. Ask them follow-up. We talk about a party on Thursday. I tell my kid, what do you want to do? Tell me what you want your decision to be when you go to this party tomorrow. How do you want to handle it? Do you want to go to the party tomorrow? It's up to you. I want to go to the party tomorrow. How do you want to handle it when you get there? This is how I want to handle it. When they come home from that party, ask how it went. How did it go? Were you able to do what you said you wanted to do? Let your child know how you see the situation rather than telling them what to do. I see that this is difficult and you have a choice. And I see that this is a difficult choice. I've been in this situation. I can tell you what I did in the situation. I can tell you what worked for me and what didn't, but I want you to figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Sometimes you have to figure out what works for you and what doesn't by practicing in the moment what that thing is that you wanna do. Okay. Open, non judgmental, and help them figure it out on their own. What happens if they don't want to talk to you? They don't want to talk to you. <laughs> They're not bringing anything up to you. And when you're bringing it up to them, they don't want to talk about it. What do we do? Well, it's pretty common for teens to be embarrassed, right? It's pretty common for them to be like, mom, I don't want to talk about that. Oh my God, I don't want to talk about that at all with you, right? Those are my, those are my teen girl and boy voices. I hope that uh, gave you some laughter, but they don't want to talk about it, right? If they come to us, that's awesome. That's great. That's what we want. Be open, non-judgmental, all that great stuff, but <laughs> they're not going to come to you a lot of times. They're going to go through stuff and you're not even going to know about it because it's embarrassing. Sometimes kids don't want to talk to their parents about their sexual orientation or even the fact that they're thinking about their sexual orientation. They don't want to talk about the fact that they're having sex with their partner. But our job is to keep our kids safe and help them make good decisions as adults. If you have a connection with your child, you have a connection with your team, it's going to be easier to enter into those conversations. If you have a if you have a, con, a, a relationship with your team where they go to their room and you go to yours, we don't eat dinner together. We don't even drive anywhere together anymore. You have to force those connections. You have to force those moments because that's where organically they come up. Okay. Excuse me. Your kids' friends know their parents. 
when you know your kids' parents, you, when you know your kids' friends' parents, you'll find out what's going on. Because some kid somewhere is telling their parents something. When they don't want to talk to you, ask them open-ended questions. Like, are any of your friends having sex yet? I know that's an odd question. I even say that. I know that's a difficult question. Any of your friends having sex yet? I know that's an odd question. Any of your friends come out yet? Because, I mean, that's going to happen, right? And they'll say, to, you know, my son says to me, what do you mean anybody come out yet? Like, has anybody come out? And you're great. Anybody having sexual orientation? You know, I don't want to call them issues, obviously. Anyone curious or anybody that has come out? And you're great. Just, just what I said. Does it happen? And you can even see, like, I'm a therapist. I talk about this stuff every day, but you can see my uncomfortability when I'm talking to my kid, right? It's totally normal. Keep up to date with their interests. Try communicating in different ways. There are many times because, and again, this is sort of organic in my house. There are many times because my husband is a gym teacher at high school and health teacher, and I am a therapist of teenagers. We sometimes organically have conversations at our dinner table about things that happen during the day. So uh, my husband uh, taught a couple of middle school classes recently and was commenting on the fact that he noticed how really, really mean some of the kids were to each other. And that led to a conversation where he said to my daughter, does that happen at your school at all? Like, do you ever see that? Um, and I you know, had a really difficult session with a client who was really, really struggling with her sexual orientation. And I said, you know, me and I had this client tonight and she's really, really struggling with her sexual orientation. And you know, her parents really aren't open and she doesn't know how to talk to them about it. And so I can kind of organically say, you know, that is something I've seen other kids struggle with, right? You can say things like, wow, I saw in the news tonight, you know, a lot of, a lot of fentanyl and heroin going into uh, some of the school districts in the area. Anybody, does that ever happen in your school? I mean, just those organic conversations, right? Find the back door to those conversations. Find the way to communicate to your child. It's hard. They're teenagers. They don't want to. If your child won't talk to you, suggest other adults they want to talk to, relative, teacher, counselor, neighbor, coach. Talk to their coach. My, uh, my son's coach gave him a really, really great compliment the other day. And he told us about it. He said, oh, he's like, you know, my, my coach said I did a really great job. And I emailed the coach and I said, I just want to let you know, like that little one line sentence that you said to, you know, my son tonight, I said, it really went a long way. I said, I could really tell he was really affected by it. And I made a connection with my son's coach, not around his playing position, not around his playing time on the field, but I made a connection with his coach about the impact he's having on my kid's life. My daughter was really struggling in math, like really struggling in math. And I noticed her grade dropped. And she was, she was normally an A student in math, dropped to a B, and then I saw it drop to a C. So I reached out to the teacher and I said, hey, what are you seeing in class? I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of, you know, not focused stuff at home. What are you seeing? She said, yeah, I'm definitely seeing the same thing. And I said, well, it's funny that I think would you mind talking to her about it? Because she told me the other day that you're a Girl Scout leader and that you go to this camp and that she told me all about this camp. And I said, I think she really might have a connection with you. Would you mind talking to her? So the teacher talked to her. She hasn't stopped talking about the teacher in the last five days. Tells me all about everything she does and all this kind of stuff. So other adults in your teen's life have connections with them and they are going to have an impact on them in a good and bad way, right? Use those connections to your advantage. Use those connections to the advantage of your kid's well-being. And tell your child and make sure you tell them this. I am so happy you came to me. Talk to me anytime, even when you don't want to, even when it's uncomfortable. Let's talk about it. Because there's stuff you're going to go through that you're not going to know how to go through. And maybe I'm not going to know how to help you, but at least I can be an ear and I can be there for you when you need me.
remember that it's common for them to be embarrassed. And even if they're embarrassed, even if they look embarrassed, still have the conversation. Even if I say to my son, anybody having sex? I know I keep saying that, but anybody doing heroin in your grade? He'll be like, mom, we use heroin, my grade, right? It's like sort of a little bit embarrassed. Well, what do they do? I don't know. Anybody vape? Yeah, it's kids would vape. Anybody vaping in the bathroom, getting in trouble? Yeah, that's happening. Did you have you ever vaped? No. Any of your friends vape? I mean, my kid does not want to have this conversation with me, but he's still there and he's not backing away from the conversation. He's giving me one word answers, but what does he know in that moment? He knows I'm willing to talk about it. He knows I want to know if he's ever been in the situation to be offered it. And he knows that if he's in a difficult spot, he can come to me and talk to me. That's what he knows because I brought it up. And I was ready because there's kids vaping all over the place right now. And then I'll say to him, you know, your cousin, Jonathan. Yeah. He vapes. Does he? Yeah. He vapes. He was actually in the hospital for it. Really? Yeah. He was in the hospital two Christmases ago. He had that thing called popcorn lung. And I'm now just talking to my kid about my nephew, Jonathan, who's 20 something years old now, like 20, almost 30 years old now. And I'm talking to him about the dangers of vaping. But am I saying, you know, there's dangers of vaping? No, I'm telling him a story about a kid who I know had a medical issue from vaping. That's called using a back door. My son was on that conversation. He was like, really? That happened? What happened next? Was he okay? Is he okay now? I had a whole conversation with my son about the dangers of vaping because I know someone he knows that was in the hospital for vaping use the back door. You can totally do this. You don't have to be a therapist. You don't have to be a gym teacher, health teacher in order to have these difficult conversations with your kids. So I am going to go back to one of the screens. So just bear with me real quick. So there are things that we can add to this list, but this is what I want you to start thinking about. I want you to prepare yourself to have these conversations with your kids. What are your thoughts about sex? What are your thoughts about sexual orientation? How do you talk to your son or daughter about masturbation and what's appropriate and what's not? I can't even say the word without feeling embarrassed. You got to talk to your kids about this, right? Someone in your house has to talk to your kids about this, your children about this. Academic difficulties, alcohol and drugs, self-harm and mental health. These, this list here is not even comprehensive, but I want you to really think about as the parent of a teen, what do you want to be prepared for? How do you want to have that conversation with them? Do you know someone that's gone through the thing you want to talk about? Did you read something or hear something on the news that made you want to talk about it? When the topic comes up, what do you want to say? What do you want to make sure your child knows? How did your parents handle that conversation with you? That's going to dictate how you handle that conversation with them. If you had a good experience with your parents, that's great. If you had a bad experience with your parents, use it. Use that example. Listen, I want to talk to you about sex because my parents never talked to me about it and it didn't serve me. And I want to talk to you about it. And I, if it's uncomfortable, I'm sorry, but I, I know that for me, it didn't go well because I didn't have that conversation. And I always felt like I wanted to talk to them and I, I couldn't. So I want to talk to you about it. Use that. I want to talk to you about drugs because my parents did talk to me about it. 
and it really helped. Um, and some of my friends growing up, their parents didn't talk to them about it and it didn't help. And I want to bring it up with you. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. Prepare yourself. It's hard. Having a teen is hard. Talking with teens is harder. Practice. Stay calm. Open, non judgmental. Help them through it. And remember, sometimes it's organic and sometimes you have to bring it up. Even if they're embarrassed, it doesn't matter. Set aside time to make sure you're connecting with your kids. My favorite way, by the way, total side note, my favorite way to connect with my son, who's seven, gonna be 17 in a few weeks, is to tell him that I need help with my phone. So I will say to him, can you help me figure out how to change this app on my phone? Because I swear this generation, it's like they were born as IT consultants. Our generation was not, right? Can you help me with something on my phone? That's how I engage him sometimes. How'd your game go? How was practice today? Even if I get one answer, fine. How was school? All right. I'm not looking for a full-fledged conversation with him. I'm looking for one answer to make sure he knows that my face is here and that I care how his day went. So thank you. We're gonna open it up to, to questions. Um, I know I, I left about 15 minutes for questions. I, don't, I know we, I think we have about six people on the call. Um, and Jen, I think you can see if there are hands raised. Yes, correct. Okay. And what I can do is I will stop the recording now. Mm -hmm. This way. Um